I think it depends on what you want to do. Um, hold on, my butt is asleep. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm on a. I'm on a stool, and <laughs> my butt's asleep. Sorry. No, no, no. This is, this is quality entertainment right here. I'm going to start 20, that again. 20% more subscribers based on that clip alone. Anyway. <laughs> Hello, friends, and welcome to yet another episode of the selfishly titled Jason Nellis Show. I am your host, and I know that's shocking to most of you, but I am Jason Nellis, and I'm here today with another friend who is doing me a favor, and by that I mean a consummate professional, a uh, producer extraordinaire, and uh, the man behind many of the uh, tech reviews and uh, uh, tech commentary, and frankly, um, uh, just breaking the bank on Austin Evans' credit card, uh, it's Matt Ancini. <laughs> hey, buddy. How are you? Hey, thanks for having me over here, and uh, thanks for the beautiful, uh, beautiful intro. Like, well, <laughs> yeah, that, that, I mean, me, me just uh, me having my credit card taken away multiple times a week is pretty a pretty good way to, to describe my job. <laughs> I mean, I feel like it's a pretty good summation of most of what you get yelled at for at work. I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I, I know, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, yeah. it's a constant theme in most of Austin's videos. <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, like between Ken and I, we just, the amount of stuff that we buy and then like, you know, we have this running theme of just like things that don't actually show up. <laughs> so like, uh, we did, we had one video where we, I ordered like the, this iPad, uh, this iPad knockoff multiple times and it never showed up and we just, I just kept buying it to see what would happen. <laughs> So, so. $9,000 later, Austin's like, where are these things? You're like, they never came. I just thought I'd try. It made, it made for a good video. <laughs> oh, God, I love that. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, you and I have known each other for a while. I've known Austin, for whom you work, uh, for I think a year or two uh, longer than that. Um, for those that aren't familiar with you and your work, give me give everybody a little context. What is it that you do with Austin? Uh, and, and, you yeah. know, what does a day look like for you? Um, so I, uh, so I work for Austin Evans. We review tech. Uh, we do, um, our signature series, which is, uh, mystery tech where we just kind of buy as much as we can off of Amazon, off of Etsy, off of wish.com recently, Timu, keep an eye out for that video. Um, and, uh, we, you know, just kind of review speed run a bunch of stuff, uh, is, is kind of our bread and butter. Um, I personally run one of our, um, we, the the company as a whole is under Overclock Media, and I run one of our other channels called This Is, which is a little bit more podcasty style, a little bit more this format. Um, where Oz and I, you know, tend to look at like some of the the things that probably wouldn't make it into a, a regular video because they're not feasible to buy. So a lot of like the weirdest stuff off of like uh, my favorite one we've done recently is called uh, un, uh, the site called Uncrate. And it's basically uh, like yeah. the alpha male like sigma bro uh like that's everything and it's like every product on there's like seven thousand dollars for a, a a whiskey that's been aged in you know chuck norris's bathtub or something like that it's all like the most ridiculous products that like probably don't even exist but like so we like to we like to do uh you know bring some of those products to light and that's that's kind of what my channel specializes in um but uh on top of that like i you know i produce for him which is kind of gathering all uh, all that stuff up really just making sure that we're like you know on on brand on topic on point and um what is what did the day look like um <laughs> going through websites saying hey that'll probably piss off austin like we should get that <laughs> but it's I mean, yeah, like <laughs> it's, if, it's, it's a the, fun if, job <laughs> I was going to say, if, if the, the objective of your daily work is how much can I upset my, you know, my boss and you're still employed, you seem to be riding that line quite well. <laughs> this, here's, I'm going to let you in some insider baseball. So when we, when we do mystery tech, uh, Ken and I are sitting off in the corner, you know, and we're basically there just for, just for the commentary. We're there just to make fun of, like, on days we shoot mystery tech, I get paid to make fun of Austin and hope that it. one of those jokes lands. So it feels great. I love that. You, yeah. um, you uh, are from uh, the East Coast originally, upstate New York, correct? Yep. Best okay. Coast. 
tell, uh, I mean, I am originally East coast. I'm a West coast transplant. I feel very torn by that statement, but you're probably, yeah. Right. I, I don't feel torn whatsoever. The more, the more I spend on the West coast, the more I, I think it's true. Tell me a little bit about your education, your background. I, the thing I want to get to is when you think about YouTube or content creators broadly, you don't often think of them as having producers. You don't necessarily even think of them as having a crew behind the scenes working with them. Um, Austin is a, a rare exception where the other people in the studio with you are characters in the videos. How yeah. did you get here? How did How does one get to a place like this? <sighs> It's, I mean, for me personally, it's a pretty long story. So I've been working in some form of media since I was about 13 years old. And I say working as in actually working. Um, so when I was 13, I was running the soundboard at like one of the local, um, uh, it was, it was more of like a youth, uh, not like, not like a youth group, but like, it was like a club for young teens. Um, and I got paid to, to run a, a soundboard for there for when they put on like concerts there, basically, you know, the high school bands that can't really play a dive bar. So I started there. Um, and for, you know, when we talk about education, I mean, I went to school for music and for, um, recording. Um, I ran a recording studio for, uh, for a brief time. And then I kind of got into, um, I kind of got into, uh, film and video and that's how I finished off my my uh, undergrad education. I did like a two plus two with um with that, but it, it just kind of like it kind of more from there. And in media, if you name a position, um, I probably worked it. So like I, you know, I I've done audio. Obviously, I've done cinematography. I I produce in the traditional sense, um, which we'll get into a second. But like, I mean, I've been an assistant director. I've worked in news. I've worked in television, doing commercials. I've worked in post-production on feature films. Um, it's all over the place. And one of the things that really all, like I, I, I met Ken when I was doing my graduate program. Uh, I was getting a master's degree cause I, I was kind of interested in teaching. And so, um, I was actually teaching and I was actually Ken's professor when I first met him, uh, which is funny cause now he's my boss. Um, but, uh, one of the things that really, uh, really bonded Ken and I was I always had a fascination, uh, fascination with, um, with kind of like the new media of at the time YouTube wasn't really a thing. Uh, when I like, you know, it was very early on, like, and I've been, I've been watching Austin since pretty early on because he was one of the only people in the space for the, for this long time. And that always kind of fascinated me of like, you know, doing all this media work outside of the traditional TV or film. Um, and so when Ken came to work for Austin, however many years ago now, we kind of stayed in touch and I was kind of taking some of the things I was seeing in the, in like the social media world and kind of trying to apply that to the, to my students. So one of the ones I remember was, um, uh, Vine when that was like at its height, one of the big projects my students had was to create a Vine. And, you know, it was very, it was just like, Hey, you got to create a six second, uh, video, we, you know, like, and you got to tell a story and a story has got to have a beginning and middle and an end. And it's got to happen in, in six seconds. And so that was just always very fascinating to me. Um, and so then when, as far as to wrap that back around and how I got here, uh, Austin and Ken were saying, Hey, we want to start up this new channel, which ultimately became this is. And they're like, you know, we, we should bring someone on to, to help us run that. And they, they called me up and said, Hey, do you want to come, want to come do this? And it was, um, Austin flew me out. Uh, we did, uh, we had a weekend where, <laughs> uh, the, the, the way this is used to be was a very different format and it was very much more infotainment and kind of like, kind of like a fun fact channel. Well, I, I remember early on when, when you guys positioned it to me that it was meant to be sort of explaining a concept or explaining a, um, you know, it was explaining like a big heady thing and sort of breaking it down and making it easier to consume. So it was a takeoff of Austin's, Hey, Hey guys, this is Austin. Like, Hey guys, this is how a plane flies or something like that. Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, so what happened was I, I fly in and basically we like, I talked to Austin, like, Hey, here's what we want to do. And he's like, Hey, you want, do you want to like test out shooting one of these when you're here? I'm like, yeah, sure. No problem. And like, I, I wrote a script, uh, for one of our early episodes. It was, um, about Taipei 101, 
which is kind of the idea that like was stuck in Austin's head and kind of like what made him want to um, want to do this. It was just, you know, the fastest elevator in the world in, in Taipei, the Taipei building. Uh, it had the pendulum in there for the counterweight. And like, he was very fascinated with this, with this building. And that was like kind of where he wanted to go with the, the first episode or, or one of the first episodes. And so I, I, I spent the entire night. Um, I, I'm in my hotel room and I worked for like literally all night researching, writing a script up. And I come back, I come back in the office the next day. I'm like, yeah, here it is. He goes, he's like, Oh, you're done already. I'm like, Oh yeah. It took me like, took me like an hour, you know, trying to like, I'm sitting there trying to get the job. Right. <laughs> I did. I probably should have told him it took me about nine hours of, of research. I, I would say writing. the lying, the lying is good, but th- that'll bite you later. <laughs> Yeah, so that's like that's one of the reasons why we kind of moved away from that format was just how much research went into into some of these topics to to kind of really get an interesting story out of it. You know, it might take me a couple days, even a couple weeks of of researching some of these topics, which is like ultimately just the the return on the investment wasn't there. But um, yeah, so that's <laughs> it's very uh, a little dishonest, but hey, it got me the job, and I'm still here, so. The, the number of times people have lied during job interviews, uh, myself included, uh, not in my current role, I want to point out, but in other ones, I've absolutely <laughs> like, massaged the data a little you bit. You didn't That's lie okay. to get your role as uh, the host of the Jason Nellis show? Oh, I did. I did. I uh, I slept with the uh, executive producer. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And by that, I mean, I was uh, uh, quietly taking a nap on a couch when I woke up and went, I have an idea. Um, <laughs> there you go. I would love... Yeah, exactly. I would love to know more about, um, there's so many aspects to what you do that is, I think, uh, uh, counter to what we all think of as being needed for content creation on YouTube. Um, in most people's minds, you come up with a video idea, you go and you shoot it, you edit it, you publish it, lather, rinse, repeat. You guys spend a lot of time building, you spend a lot of time planning. And then the thing I, I'd really love to hear more about too, if you don't mind, is, I'd you know, you, you spend a lot of time in the analytics and not just what YouTube gives you, but what you can find more broadly. How much does audience response and video view through completion and views overall, like how much does all of that influence decision-making for the kinds of content you produce? A lot is, is the short answer of that. Um, audience response, not so much. Um, Cause usually like when you talk about like, if, if you say audience response, we're typically talking about like comments and most of the time with comments, um, those are a very loud minority. Like most people just don't leave comments. So uh, that's not a great gauge of, you know, if, if people like something or they don't like something. Um, not to say that we ignore it. It just, you know, it's not, that's not really like a super high on the priority list. Um, because we will all often, uh, we will often see like, you know, you know we, we uh, mentioned the hate click of sometimes we're like, Hey, we're going to title this. Cause we know someone's going to click on this just to tell us they don't like the, what we said. Um, and, uh, we, we get plenty of that. And then, so I do tend to tend to look at like something like the, um, we don't really have the dislike button anymore, but like it used to be like, if you had like a, a pretty low, like, like to dislike ratio, that was a pretty good idea. Like people really hated this. Um, but what we, what we, uh, really look for is that watch time and, and how much are people watching through this, um, through this video, how much are we keeping their attention and that, that we structure our, our videos accordingly to that, because statistically we found that about like 50%, like most people will watch about 50% of video, almost, almost regardless of what the length of the video is, um, there's, there's kind of like a diminishing returns on that. If you have an hour long video, probably not going to watch 30 minutes of that. But in the most cases, a, a 10 to 15 minute video, probably going to be about 50% of that. Um, and so we, what we try and do is squeeze out some of that. How can we, how can we shift this and how can we get that to 60 or 70%? Um, Cause that's, that's really when uh, YouTube starts to, to like the content we're making and, Oh, you, you, you have people who are really engaged in this and let's, let's watch that. So, uh, we often rearrange our videos, um, and you know, from the, both the planning process, but also the, the, um, the editing process, if there's a really good moment that happens at the very end of the video, we do whatever we can to make that moment happen in that first 50%. 
even if it's doing something like a cold open, just to kind of show that like, hey, this is a great, they, you, these are the moments that are going to capture someone. Because, um, you know, one thing that I'm sure so many content creators will tell you, but uh, we, you know, so many more content creators should embrace is um, we tend to not move forward with a, a video, like a concept, if we don't have some sort of marketing angle associated like that we can use toward it. Because we can make the best video in the world if we don't have a title and a thumbnail that's going to make someone click that video. It doesn't matter how good that video is. I remember Austin once telling me that that if you can't think of a title and a thumbnail, more than video concepts or a channel concept, if you can't find a way to ideate on on um, titles and you don't have a good way of at least generating interesting, not necessarily good quality, but interesting uh, thumbnails, uh, you're you're already stuck in the mud. Does that take up most of your time? Um, I wouldn't say most of the time. Um, I partly because we've gotten pretty good at it. Um, you know, we we kind of had like, uh, we look at a lot like what Mr. Beast does, and if you look at Mr. Beast, a lot of his thumbnails are the like, especially on his like secondary channels, they're the exact same thumbnail every time, and it's like you know, it's just a template that gets put on there, and so sometimes you know, we we've embraced that plenty of times we we have like titles that work really well and uh you know they work and you know well well people might say it's oh clickbait or you know it's you you're tricking us into thinking it's well that's unfortunately the way youtube is like it's um people clickbait because that is the way to get to get noticed on youtube um and so we try and you know we try and not be like absolutely blatant with it but we 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 get cheeky with it sometimes. Um, there's been plenty of times we uh, we've embraced AI. So you know, talking if we're talking about a weirdest product or something like that, uh, we've made some you know we've had some interesting uh, AI images generated for it. And we what we usually do is just put in a prompt of like what we're talking about in the video and what AI what AI comes up with. But so every once in a while, that's you know that 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 shakes things up a bit. But it's you know like. There's, there's been plenty of videos when we said, Hey, this is like, this is a great video. And then no one clicked it. And it's, and it's, it's defeating as a creator to, see, you know, when no one clicks it, but like, so it's it, a lot of people, a lot of people want to think about the, the thumbnail at the very last second. And it just, unfortunately that doesn't always work out great. I, I think one of the things that, that, um, one of the things I really admire about you all is um, you've really, built a schedule for yourselves that allows for both a consistent expectation of video types. So mystery tech being an, ex an example where I know every couple of weeks there's going to be a new mystery tech. And if that's something I really love, that's something I can look forward to, but giving yourselves also some flexibility around other types of, of content to experiment with. Um, and I think this is really uh, uh, codified in this is where you started in one place and you iterated and test until you got to the current yep. format. But even within that current format, which is, you know, the, it's a, essentially three cameras, you in one shot, Austin in one shot, and then a two shot of the both of you, along with your, your uh, lovely uh, studio manager who is constantly keeping you two in line. Um, <laughs> I, I think that is uh, Kinsey, you know, our producer. She's great. Kinsey yeah. is Kinsey is the glue that holds that together. There's no question in my yes. mind. Um, Fact. But I think what I'd love to know really at its basic level is like when you have that space for coming up with something different, what is the process? You're, you're bringing Austin these ideas as much as Austin is coming up with them, I presume. What's the, the creative process you both go through? How do you end up? Do you, do you do sort of a round of pitches every week? Do you just bring ideas as they come to fruition? Do you have to bring him a complete script? How does that process generally work for you? So that that process has changed drastically over the past few years. It used to be um, we scripted everything, and we don't really do that anymore. Um, so uh, old this uh, old like very old Austin videos were completely scripted, and then he kind of moved to a bullet point system where we used to just have not a teleprompter per se, but like an iPad, uh, would just have like some of the bullets there, uh, and we've gotten away from that completely. But um, so the way that this is works um is we typically we have like a you know like kind of like a teleprompter or a monitor just in front of us which again kind of has like we have like powerpoint and they're like we'll have some of the notes that we're talking about there um but as far as the actual ideas is we typically have a 
kind of like an all hands on pitch meeting where kind of everyone at the company is, is talking through ideas and, you know, we pitch, we pitch something. And then a big part of that meeting is, does this make sense on the main channel? Does it make sense on this is, or does it make sense on our third channel, Danky, which is run by Ken. So we, we've been over the past year, we've been kind of carving out these spaces of like, where, where does content live across the overclock family? You know, if it's more of a discussion piece or a little bit more, you know, kind of like loose back and forthness, it's probably going on. This is, if it's more of a structured kind of, uh, in-depth review, it's probably going to go on Danky. And if it's more of the, um, we call it, uh, infotainment of just like, you know, we're trying to give you some information, but be, be fun and entertaining with it is that's usually on the, uh, the main channel. So, you know, and, and we'll, we'll also say like, how can we synergize that? So how can we do a video on the main channel? That's going to kind of, um, going to play off a video that we did in this is. A uh, perfect example of that is we did um, kind of like the worst consoles that have ever, like the worst selling consoles of all time. Um, this is a relatively small channel compared to the main channel. It doesn't have the budget to buy all those uh, consoles and and actually have them and review them. Um, but the main channel does. So we kind of looked at some of these on, you know, on uh, this is with had a little bit more of the stats and facts and figures where we can have easily with a, you know, right ahead of us. And then on the main channel, we buy them and we actually tested them out and said, oh, now we see why this was the worst selling console of all time. And so uh, a lot of that goes into that pitch meeting. Um, and we, you know, how can we market it? Where does this live? And what's the, what's it going to take to make this video? Do you guys end up holding on to consoles for those kinds of reviews? Do you end up, returning them, giving them away. Like I have to imagine that after all these years of, of technology being reviewed and looked at, that there must be a warehouse somewhere just filled with old Austin Evan leftovers, Austin Evans leftovers, that, excuse me. That is a great misconception. Mm. Uh, we do have a lot. We have plenty yeah. um, and consoles and stuff. Like we have every, just about every console that's been made. Not like that's, you know, like vast majority of them. We have some of the, the weirder ones we don't. Um, but like everyone thinks that we have like 7,000 PCs. Um, one of the, the, the things that we, we often do is just recycle PCs. So we build something and, um, we, as soon as it's done and as soon as the video goes live, we take it apart, put it back on the shelf. And the next time we do a, a build with a 30, a 3090 or a 4090, it's the same 4090 that was in three other videos. Um, so that is that is like one of the big um the big uh misconceptions that we just like I'm you know we oh they have five five forty eighties. No, we don't. We have one forty eighty that we just keep we keep unboxing. We we hold on to the box. Um and uh so there's plenty of stuff like most of the stuff we get from uh Mystery Tech, um we end up donating. Um so, uh, you know, we just take it over to the Goodwill and, and donate that way. Um, it's, I mean, it, it, as much as we'd love to keep everything, uh, you're right. There is, there is, would be way, like, uh, we just moved into a building not that long ago and we would be full already if we kept everything that we had on here. So, Yeah. I, I just want you to know if there's ever anywhere, if there's ever a uh, hardware that you want to retire from reusing over and over again, happy to give it a good home. I just want you to know, <laughs> I, you know what? I've got uh, a nice I, yard. It can run free. I'm just saying. <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time I got a message like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm a student. I know you guys have 700 uh, PCs. I could, I could have retired a long time ago, but like, it's, you know, it's, um, but like, PC components we hold on because uh, we just did a video talking about about like ten year old hardware. We're like, oh, we, you know, if we had like we could have like we might have that in stock. We could maybe build this PC ourselves if we have all these things in stock. So it's like it's very nice to just be able to to go and say, okay, let's pull like you know, let's pull this. Um, we have a video coming up about Wii uh, accessories, and so just be like, oh, let me just go grab the Wii off the shelf. So like. Having these things readily available is, is really, really helpful. 
Well, I think one of the things too that, that resonates for me about this is the idea that investment doesn't necessarily mean buying a bunch of things that you're going to re, you know, you're going to, you're going to need four of these for four different builds. Like, of course, why wouldn't you just take apart the computer, the, the, the PC you just built and repurpose it later? Like, what does that matter to the viewer? If you're using the same graphics card over and over again, you're just like, Oh, here's our new, you know, 40, you know, 4090. But I do think that, that having seen a number of custom builds that Austin and you all have produced over the years, uh, I can also see that there must be a lot of attention that you get whenever you do a, a custom build of some sort of like, can I, you know, can I have that from you? Can I order one of these? You know, can, you know, you made this for so-and-so, can I have this as well? Um, how do you deal with the inbound that comes from that, that sense from the, the fan community of, you know, I really, it's not the sense, the barrage of, of messages that you get, does it just all sit somewhere in an inbox? Do you have somebody that goes through it to see like, maybe we'll do a giveaway. And is there somebody here who's, you know, uh, particularly deserving or something like that? Or is it all just like, everybody stop asking, you'll know when we're doing a giveaway. Yeah. It, it, that's, that's a tough convert. Uh, that's a tough answer because like for the most part, it just sits in an inbox, you know, like a message request that we don't see. Um, Oh, you know, the custom builds we've done have been made like, we, there's plenty of ones we've done in partnership with like Microsoft or like, you know, Austin made one for Lee and Lee cause they're friends. And he's like, I want to, you know, Lee and Lee's the Pokemon guy. Let me make him a Pokemon PC. You know, it's us, us getting into the business of making custom ones is not something we're interested in. One, it's just it's hard enough making YouTube videos, let alone <laughs> starting another uh, business with that. But uh, I think if you look at um, Jay's two cents is, great at his transparency when it comes to um when it comes to giveaways and things like that of um one there's a lot there's a lot of just weird rules when it comes to giveaways especially international giveaways that make it very difficult to do an international giveaway some countries are just they just don't allow it um other uh other ones it's just it's so like ungodly expensive to ship things that it's just like cost more than the build itself by a lot and that so uh i believe um i believe jay just had one that was like it's like five it cost like five thousand dollars to ship something to like australia and so um while we've done giveaways in the past it's it's often more trouble than it's often worth because even even when you're doing something great like giving it away it's usually met with you know why didn't i win it or like why is it only this country can do it it, it's it's a tough it's a tough situation and that's we like now we have given away stuff like um you know we gave away a pc at like micro center um it's like but it's it's which we, we don't we don't like embrace it that much just because it's a big a big hassle yeah makes total sense and i think too it's a good reminder that just because it seems like it should be easy or inexpensive or simple um often the the layers of complexity that one well, doesn't anticipate is really what comes up. And, and again, a lot of this, like, Hey, you have so many PCs. Can I have one? It's we, we don't like, you know, it's, I think right now um, we have maybe four total PCs that are built in our, in our entire building right now that aren't like, that aren't like, you know, someone's workstation. So like it's, and those are, those are two, two of those PCs are ones that we talked about in a video that were complete scams. So like, you know, it's, like it's what like i don't know there there's always going to be someone like hey that's still better than my pc can i have it but like um it's it's like when you it's a floodgate when you open it up as soon as you say like oh yeah like i gave it to one person now everyone's going to want it so absolutely um i i laugh only because even even in my day job i get a lot of people who are looking for freebies in some nature or another and i just think it may be um you know, perhaps it's, it's the, the current culture of the internet that like, you never, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. So I may as well ask. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That, that is. Yeah. And so like, I mean, we never, <laughs> you're never going to see a thing saying like, Hey, stop asking us. Like, you know, like, <laughs> like we, we like, we're not, we're not going to no. respond to someone like, we're done. Hey, you idiot. <laughs> like, <laughs> we just, uh, well, that's, you know. that's how you text me. So wait, am I, not I do text right, you like right. that. Yeah, Listen, you yeah. idiot. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for our podcast. <laughs> hey, idiot. Are we getting a sandwich or not? Yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, totally fair. 
so much of what you guys do is collaborative. You pitch ideas to each other and that, you know, that you can sort of work together in a lot of ways, but you do have three channels, including, uh, Ken's, uh, uh channel Denki. Um, how do you split your time? Do you find that you sort of keep it flexible and you're going between projects or is it you're really solely dedicated on this aspect of this is, and you get pulled into main channel stuff sometimes. How, how does that division of labor work or division? I should say of resources. I'd say everyone's a kind of about 70, 30. Um, everyone here kind of does something else at some point, but like my, my, my role is to be the showrunner, producer, whatever for this is, but there's plenty of times that I'm working on a main channel thing. Um, there's plenty of our crew that works on, you know, helps uh, with, with Danky because right now Ken's doing it all himself. You know, he's doing a very good job working on it by himself. But um, so like it's everyone kind of steps in and. What am I? You're, you're losing a light over there. What's happening for those of you, no for those idea. of you listening and the two people who are listening, a light is flickering. And now I'm worried about Matt's safety. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's more Matt's sanity because I'm the one who set up the studio, so I got to fix that. Um, well, that's not good. So, uh, it's it's on now. It just came back on, but um, so uh, like we we all kind of like shift around and say, oh, well, you know, oh, we're this is a head on its edits. Hey, can our editor help out on getting a danky uh a danky edit started or something? Like, you know, it's it's most people are are kind of in their lanes, but there's definitely room to. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna help on whatever uh, whatever we need to today. Being a small company, which is weird because like you mentioned earlier, like a lot of people don't associate a YouTube channels having having these big crews, um, and so we are fairly large when it comes to a lot of other YouTube channels. With um, I forget how many we're like ten employees. I forget how many it is. Uh, I haven't haven't mathed in my head in a while. Um, but uh, that's pretty big compared to a lot of places, but also very small when you consider it's three channels and we're also just like, you know, like an actual company with, we have a building that has things that need to be fixed and sets that need to be built. And um, so like, yeah, we all, we all just kind of pitch in and do, do whatever's needed. Yeah. Well, or comparative, I, I should say to somebody like Linus from Linus Tech Tips, who has, you know, who's well known for having just, nearly a hundred people. I think it's like 85 people who work for him now, um, which is its own challenge, right? Like as you add more people, it isn't just, you know, it isn't just needing to pay them or needing to find them something to do. It's you need a business reason to justify the 10 you have and any expansion you want to do. Yeah. And it's interesting that because like, I, I, you know, he has a lot more, he does a lot more than just YouTube, which is a big thing. So like, um, I don't know the numbers on it, but like he's he's pretty transparent on it, so I'm sure he has a list somewhere. But of how much of his crew is just dedicated to the LTT store and and merch, and you know they do all that in house, and now he has the lab, which is testing things, and so it's it's a very different like, you know, it's very easy to say, oh well, we we get all these videos done with ten people, and he needs a hundred. It's not that it's it, it's it's apples to oranges. It's, um, and, uh, you know, like he is the, the Lions media group is kind of like the gold standard for like expanding. And that, that's very, like, that's, that's very large. Um, you know, because uh, a lot of the growing pains that people don't realize when we're, we're growing this company, cause just for the background context, I was, um, the, uh, fifth employee for overclock. Um, and you know, we've, we've doubled in size since, since I've been here it's not always like, Oh, we can, we can just make more content. Uh, it's, there's, there's weird growing pains with growing like that. Um, and it's ones that no one ever thinks of. For example, uh, I spent my morning building a table from Ikea today because we realized that we don't actually have enough seats at the break room table for all of our employees anymore. And oh, so wow. like we had to get a second table and like, that's a, like, it's a very weird that's a very weird, like specific growing pain, but like, it's all, it's things like that. Like we, you know, when we, when we were in our old space, we physically could not put any more people in there. Um, so that's like, we, we moved into this building, uh, roughly a year ago and it was it mainly just to accommodate our growth. But now we have this building and we have to say, okay, well, we got to spin up channels to support having a building. So it's, um, the the growing pains are definitely there. It's as much as we like to say, like, oh yeah, we'll hire ten more people and spin up twenty more channels. It's 
doesn't it doesn't work that that quickly yeah walk me through let's change gears for a second uh sure. i i would love to know because you are a technical guy and you have thoughts on how people should shoot and record and light and all of that stuff one mm -hmm. of the things i love to ask people if if you were starting fresh day one having all the knowledge that you have now what are the three to five pieces of equipment you would want to invest in specifically? And let's pretend for the sake of conversation, we're not looking for, you know, top end, highest caliber stuff, but like, what are the five things you're like, if you're going to go out and spend money on something, this is the thing you should spend money on. The number one thing you should spend money on is a good microphone. Uh, everything else about your setup can be bad. And if you have a, if you have good audio, it's going to go a thousand times fa farther than good than good lighting um lighting i think is second um so uh i mean i'm a huge fan of aperture's um entire line and especially like their um is it amaran or Amar I, I forgot what their budget line is it's i think it's Araman. amaran um, i think you're right amaran yeah like it's yeah uh I just, i'm not good with the product names but like for like 150 bucks you can get a really good like 60 watt light with a um and it's like if you have like some decent lighting, even a, even a, a bad camera will look decent. Even even the, the horrible, horrible MacBook uh, camera would look decent. So um, I would like, I would focus on those two things first and then and then uh, like a halfway decent camera. Um, but for most people, I'd say just use your phone. Uh, we shoot a lot of our videos with iPhone and no one notices. Um, like we intercut that all the time and not, not one person is then like oh that's an iphone that's not that's not what uh that's not a red or whatever so um most of the time like the the phone you have in your pocket is probably the, one of the best cameras you can you can uh you can get for really cheap so you know it's basically free 99 if you already bought the phone and a lot of people just kind of don't like they think they like a lot of people who, who want to get into content creation like oh i can't because i don't have all this equipment that's not just buy a blue Yeti um, or better yet. Uh, Deity has a great kit. Um, it's uh, the VO seven U uh, th their USB microphone system for like 200 bucks is like one of the best mics you can get for that price hands down. And it's like a full kit with an arm. Um, it's, it's, it's fantastic. And it's, that will last you for, for a long, long, long time if, in, in getting into content creation. Um, I saw a tweet the other day that was like, if you want to get into content creation, you need to not be buying a USB microphone. Uh, I think that's just wrong. That's just, that's just like, it's gatekeeping and it's wrong. Um, yeah. and you know, like, yeah, I'm on this like crazy over the top setup right now, but like, it's not, it's not necessary. I mean, I'm recording this on my end with USB. I know yeah, that's it's, sacrilegious, it's, but it sounds no, it's, fine. It's, it, yeah, it's it's there's nothing wrong with USB. The old, like right. the stigma with USB came from a, like a few years ago when it was just it was just harder to record with because like recording directly into like a software with USB was just not not well developed. It was like uh, it would often lose sync compared to video. It was like weird weird kind of, kind of time code formats, but like now it's perfect. So you said an okay camera. Let's assume for a minute somebody has a little bit to invest uh, and they don't want to just use their iPhone, which I agree with you, by the way. iPhone is a great place to start. And in fact, we've talked to other creators like our friend El Jefe, who still shoots you know, half of his stuff on his phone if he, if he has nothing else available to him. How do you feel about like going and buying a like a Sony camera that's mid range with a stock lens. Like if you're going to invest in if you're going to invest in a camera, should you wait until you can invest a lot of money into the really upper end of the camera, or is it okay to start with something that's like a couple hundred bucks in a stock lens and we're just going to figure it out as we go? I think it depends on what you want to do. Um, hold on, my butt is asleep. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm on a I'm on a stool and my butt's asleep. Sorry. No, no, no. This is, this is quality entertainment right here. I'm going to start 20, that again. 20% more subscribers based on that clip alone. Anyway. <laughs> I, I think it really depends on what you want to do with it. So, like, I mean, if you want to be a Twitch streamer, um, there, like, get a webcam. Get a decent webcam. Um, 
you know, because like the the cost of rigging up a, a regular camera to work with your computer, I, I, I mean, a regular camera, like say like a, a Sony RX100 with a, like a point and shoot that was really good quality. Um, just, you know, it's older and uh, older now. But um, the, the, the cost to rig that up to work on your system is is going to probably double or even triple your cost when you ca- talk about having like an interface, uh, the hardware to actually mount that whatever it's and plus if you're if you're like you're kind of starting out like that it's it's a little a little bit more complicated on how to actually set that up um razor just came out with a new webcam the it's like kira again i'm terrible with product names um but they have a 4k webcam that legitimately blew me away um so it's you know i'm i was i saw this at ces in a i was in a hotel suite with them no lighting, just dark hotel room, and it looked fantastic. And for like three hundred bucks, that like if you're gonna be a Twitch streamer, that's probably all you need for a very long time. Now, if you do want to go and like be shooting things, I do recommend kind of saving your money and shooting with an iPhone until you can get something that's um, a little bit more scalable. Um, so you know, like an RX one hundred is really good, but that's it that you're never going to improve. You never can like really improve that. Whereas if you get something with like an interchangeable lens system, you can, you know, maybe save some money and getting it, getting a, a kit, a stock kit lens and then upgrade your glass as you move on. And then when, you know, you can, you can invest in good glass with a mediocre camera because when you ultimately invest in a good camera, that glass carries over. So, uh, it depends on, like I said, it depends on really what you want to do. Um, but, for the most part, like spending a little bit more than the absolute bottom tends to work out a whole lot more. So it's, it's, you know, like that I used to say, like, try and try and save up a little bit extra to, and that will, that will last you a whole lot longer in my, in, in my experience. One thing I hear from a lot of different um, tech review folks is love for a particular, uh, you know, camera company. Cause the idea that, you know, if you're going to invest early in a camera, the lenses are going to match that camera. You kind of get stuck in one, you know, one system or another. Um, yeah. You know, do you feel strongly about Sony versus Canon versus Red versus any of the other? I mean, like, is there anything in particular, like somebody who's starting out, what are they, what are the qualities they should measure in where they want to invest? So uh, to any camera person's, um, I don't know what, every, every camera person is going to clench up when I say this. Our, our red uh probably 50k when it was brand new or whatever uh is is sitting on a shelf collecting dust that's an inch thick um mainly because the sony um the sony fx uh series has gotten so good uh i mean the a7 line was really good but me personally the fx series is the is the one to go um more you know it's just yeah like i recommend it right now thanks to you yeah uh, so I'm using an FX30 right now, uh, which is the the um, the non full frame uh, version of that, uh, which we can use our our nice old lens that was super 35. You know, like it's it's they're so good that a lot of people tend to like Canon color better, um, just out of the camera better. The the color that we have here, we have actually developed for this camera. Like this this is a a custom made LUT. Um, but uh, out, like directly out of camera, Canon tends to be the the winner on that, or Fuji tends to be a very big winner for color. But as far as like functionality and, and what you get in the box of like just any Sony camera, the FX series is really hard to beat. Um, because like it's just the like if you get like a Sony lens, the autofocus is is pretty flawless. Uh, it you know it's got built in slow motion. Um, it's got. 4k output to do whatever you need with it it's just it's and it's, it's pretty cheap like they're you know like compare when you compare it to what you need to rig a lot of other cameras to get to this having a built-in handle on the fx series is is worth its weight in gold to me when we uh when we did our our shoot um in the aptly named vomit comet airplane where you i remember you know, this the, yeah. is the zero gravity uh airplane you know, as we're, we're sitting there and you go in zero gravity and having a handle to hold onto that camera, uh, that was great because it floated away from me several times. 
Well, I know many people will be shooting in zero G. That's probably going to be yeah. Like most people, most people, if you plan on shooting <laughs> zero gravity, grab a grab a Sony. Yeah, talk about talk about a champagne problem. Oh God, I was on this incredible once in a lifetime <laughs> yeah, flight. Yeah. My camera floated away <laughs> from me. Uh, it's um, it's uh it's pretty vomit resistant too. If I, if I'm being honest. Uh, you know what? That's good to know. Listen, I, you know, God forbid you're get you're you're caught out in the you know the the winds or the waves or the waves of vomit. Yeah. I, that this is all important to know. I I dig all of this. I before we wrap, the one thing I I do want to know from you more than anything else is: Do you have any particular advice for somebody who's getting started? Right? Is there anything that you you meet somebody who's like, I, I've got this idea for, you know, and, and not just tech review, of course, any channel. Um, but you know, I, I have this compulsion to want to make videos. it's really cliche, but it's just to do it. Like it's, you're going to suck at it. And, um, you know, like even go, go look at like any of my early, this is videos. Uh, we call it my quiet mad arc because like, uh, the entire video I'm, I'm talking like this. Cause like, I'm not really confident in, in what I'm doing. And then you go watch a video from like last week. And I'm like, hello and welcome to this. It, like, it's just, like, I didn't get that that comfort level until like a almost a year into doing this and like what worked and what didn't work like came along with that. And so like, I, I hear so many people like, Oh, I'm going to start it when I have like, can get a better camera or again, just make it. No one's going to watch it at first because that's just how creating things works. And then like, you just kind of build it up and, and, and feel, feel more comfortable and just kind of, you just kind of go for it. And like, I know it's very cliche, but it's the best thing I can tell people. You know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's bad advice just because it's cliche. It's cliche for a reason. And I, I agree yeah. with you. I'm reminded, um, when you and I met first, I was working on a different company called unboxed and we were producing a daily show that was meant to highlight tech reviews. And I was thinking the other day about this exact thing that my early recordings and I'm going to have to find some and put them up because they're terrible. I mean, they're truly awful, but they're also a good example of do it until you're good at it. Right. Even though yeah. I have a theater degree, I'm, you know, I'm that guy who like, I was happy to be on stage singing and dancing. Like it's not the same thing as being on camera. And when you have, you know, you feel uncomfortable with bad lighting and you realize your microphone isn't very good. And early on, I had some <laughs> $10 Walmart purchase lapel thing that was, you know, this large. And, you know, it was, it, it, it looked like, yeah. you know, a, a hand was coming up to grab my face kind of a thing. Um, you know, you, you realize that once you start getting into it and you get people to give you feedback and you start to get more knowledgeable, it really does help you become confident yes but also savvy it makes you more competent in the conversation to not just ask like what should i do but get more specific about your questions and the kind of knowledge you want to get from people like you so instead of it being matt what do i do to get a great channel together it's okay i'm finding that people are dropping off two minutes into my video this is the thing that i'm doing early on what are two or three things you can tell me to make adjustments on right like that kind of stuff Make sure it's something you're passionate about, but also like one of the, one of the things I warn people about is, uh, is how many people like, oh, like I love this one thing and I want to, I want to like, let me make some content. I, you know, I can monetize this and make content out of it. And then they end up hating it <laughs> because like when you, when you try and monetize your hobbies, they no longer become hobbies. They become work. Make sure it's something you're passionate about, but also make sure it's, it make sure it's something that you can, um, I want to say like live without like, you know, it's I like I had a very, very, very short run of I, you know, I tried to make a, a channel myself of talking about Marvel movies and I, I, I shut it down really quick because, you know, I, I was going to these Marvel movies and I'm like, oh, like I'm not enjoying them because I'm trying to look for Easter eggs in the theater. I have a, like a notepad the the opening day of like, oh, like what's what what are the Easter eggings to, to, to talk about the bigger universe? And I no longer was enjoying the movies. So like, I, you know, I, I think I did like three videos total and I'm like, I, I like, I, I love Marvel movies. I don't want to, I don't want to ruin these for myself. So like, that's, I think that's something that a lot of people just don't, don't realize. And like, you know, I've, I, I'm a, I've, I'm a big Lego fan and people are like, Hey, you should make a Lego channel. I'm like, absolutely not. One of the, one of the things I love about doing Legos is just spreading them out on the table, putting on a movie and, and, and just building and relaxing. 
if I if I had to like, oh, I gotta film myself doing this now, it, it loses all the it loses all the the thing I like about it. So that's another thing that I just feel like a lot of people just don't think about. No, I think that's a great call out. And I think too, it's a, it's an important reminder that it's not just about finding something you love that you want to talk about. It's something that you don't mind when it turns into work and you don't yeah. mind when it becomes your, you know, when, it, when, when you have to do it, even though you don't feel like doing it and you have to put on a smiley face to do it is really hard when it's something you used to love as a hobby. And, Cause like we get that here, like, you know, it's like, there's times when like, Oh, like, we're oh, we're swamped whatever we're we don't we don't necessarily um it's a perfect uh austin austin tweet about this uh it was like raining really hard in california here a couple weeks ago it was actually leaking into our studio and we're sitting there like rushing around the studio to try and like clean up the water and we're like oh wait no we have to shoot a video right now because deadlines and so like we're both like really grumpy trying to like after after uh cleaning up all this stuff and we just have to go Hello and welcome. Like it's we have we had to turn on this, like this like this happy go lucky, and then as soon as it's over, like we gotta we gotta clean this up. This is like you know, like so like being able to being able to compartmentalize that. Like you're like how how are you grumpy when you're talking about tech? Which like well, can I I don't want to be cleaning up a, a flood. Right. Well, I, I I I'm trying to remember who it was. It must have been. I think it was Brian Cranston or somebody of a similar acting caliber who was talking about being on, on stage and comparing it to like acting school and in acting school, the whole focus is I'm sure it is in film school or any media is like, you know, it's about the art. It's about the focus. You got it. Like you got to be in the game. And he's like, and when you're, you know, when you're a professional actor and you're on Broadway or doing a play eight, eight shows a week, like, do you think that every time you see an actor on stage, their whole body and mind is just focused on being in the moment. They're like, hell no. He's like, you know, it could be doing to kill a mockingbird. I'm doing a famous speech as, you know, as, you know, as the courtroom is, is coming to a close. And in my head, I'm like, did I get the milk? Did I get the eggs? I don't, yeah, I got to remember to get, you know, I got to remember to pick up butter. Cause if I'm going to make this that, you know, like your brain is always going to be trying to pull you in 20 different directions. You still gotta, you still gotta love it enough to be able to, to slog through it when it sucks. Yeah. And that's what like a lot of people don't realize like how how draining it is to be like on camera, at least for me. Like so I have a lisp, I have a stutter that when I'm on camera, the whole my whole thought is how am I suppressing these? How am I, you know, like how am I enunciating way more than I probably would in real life? And to like that is that is most of my mental capacity when I'm doing uh, when I'm on camera. Otherwise it's kind of more like this and like it's you like I like trying to try thinking about putting either the tongue in the back of your throat. So it doesn't make a lisp sound like it, it's exhausting. That's hard. That's hard to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like, yeah, you know, it's, it's like, Oh yeah. Like what did you, what did you do? I shot three videos. And like, to me, I'm like, that's, that's a lot. And then someone's like, Oh, the job must be so easy. You're sitting behind a desk. I'm like, mm, <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I find even this exhausting. And, and you know, this is something that, is very natural for me. But every time we end these, I, I have to take half an hour afterwards and just go like, I have to go sit in a corner and look at nothing. I can't look at a monitor. I can't look at a camera. I got, if I, if, and if I get, you, yeah, I get my right, Red Bull, like, right. I mean, yeah, I, I'll, you know, I'll go and drink coffee after cause I'll feel completely yep. drained. I absolutely empathize with that. Um, I hear that frequently from a lot of people performing in the way that you do um, across the board. Right. And it, it, that doesn't just apply to being on camera. I'm sure that there are times where you're, not terribly interested in writing a script or thinking through thumbnails and, and titles and, you know, all of that. And like any, uh, it's, it's like any other job, it's work. That, that, and that is the one thing that I think that most people don't realize, especially with YouTube, because uh, like recently, you know, the, when you ask a, ch uh, like a kid, what, what their dream job is recently, it's become, be, become a content creator. A lot of people just don't realize that this is a job. It is a, a career. It's, um, you know, I, I like we come in at nine o'clock, we cut like it's a nine to five that we don't take a home with us all the time. Uh, that was one thing when I uh, used to stream a lot would just be like, Hey, like, where's, where's Austin? Where's Ken? It's like, well, at their homes, because like, right. it's, you know, you know, it's not a, it's like, we don't live in a house together 24 seven. Um, and, I like, can't uh, imagine something more stressful than living with the people <laughs> with whom you work. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like it's like I like I don't it's it seems like it it just it, it kind of like it, it it still baffles me how many people just kind of that seems to be lost on them 
because they like they have this they have this idea in their head that like oh yeah this is just like you know we exist in this like world that is like austin evans channel and then like everything else kind of happens around that which is it's just really not the case and that's like it's, you know like so like that's that's what like I, a lot of people just don't realize when they're when they're talking about being coming a content creator yeah. well plus i mean you have to have a life outside of this i mean austin is yeah. You know, Austin's a dad and a husband and, you know, you guys all have things that you like to do that aren't related to, you know, reviewing the latest uh, uh, graphics card or uh, console, you know. Oh, God, did that light go off and on again? Buddy, I'm sorry. Sure That's did. so frustrating. Sure did. <laughs> I know what I'm doing after this. I know what I know I'm doing after are. this recording. All I'm right. debugging a whole bunch of DMX code. <laughs> Well, I'm, oh boy. I, you know what? I'm going to take that as a sign from on high that maybe now's a good time <laughs> to wrap. Uh, before we go, uh, obviously, you know, folks know where to find Austin. Is there anywhere in particular you want to drive folks to come and find you? Twitter, uh, Twitch, anything yeah, like uh, that that you want to call out? I'm most active on my, on my, uh, on my Twitter account where I just basically just dumb thoughts that come through my brain. Uh, I have a semi active, uh, TikTok, uh, Chef Matteo. Um, I'm told it's pretty cursed. <laughs> But uh, yeah, like, uh, and you can check out my the you know my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash this is. That's where you mostly find me. But hey, thanks for having me on. This is really fun. Absolutely, it was a real pleasure. I hope we get to have you back on soon. Um, oh, and uh, whenever, you know, whenever you want, buddy. Uh, you're very sweet. All right, my friend. Uh, well, this has been uh, phenomenal. I really appreciate it. Thank you all for for those watching and listening. And if you have any feedback and you want us to change something up or do something different in the format, leave a comment. We'd love to hear it. In the meantime, I've been your host. It's been fun. See you next time. Mm -hmm.